संकर्तनम यप प्रणाशनम प्रणामो दुख समन नमा हरि परम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे श्रीमद भागवतम की जय कृष्ण तदीय पद पंकज पंचरा अद्वैम मे विशुत मानस राज हंस प्राण प्रण प्राण प्रयाण सामे कपवात पित कंदा वरदनो विदु स्मरण कुटस्ते ब्यूटिफुल प्रेयर इन मुकुंद मालाटन बाय कुलशेखर आलवाड़ कुलशेखर इन दॉंग दट the lord's lotus feet or like a cage and my mind is like a swan let my mind be caged into the lotus feet of the lord right now that's what his prayer is right now let it be right now where my mind get entangled or caught into the cage called the lotus feet of the lord and he said what's what's the reason for this urgency also in the another the second part of the shloka prana prayana samaye prana prayana samaye means prana means life force the life air prayana means it's just leaving and leaving the body and ready to depart the body that samaya that time when the life is going to leave my body kappa vata pittaihi kapavata pittaihi means there are three things where kapham I mean, and the cuff uh, mucus and all those and, and the and the knee problem all these different different problems may be there that we might be having no um, breathing problem and unable to do any of this activities anything is possible this all according to the ayurveda everything falls into these three things kapha vata and pitta this thing if the three things are not balanced well then one get into a disease stage that's why in ayurveda the three has to be balanced well by proper food proper exercise and everything but anyway that's not the topic what uh, um, kulashekra is trying to say even if you do so at the time of death there should be an imbalance obviously that's that's how one can depart right so one has to depart anyway so his point is प्राण प्रयाण समय कपवात पित्तई कंदा वरदनो माय वॉइस माय थ्रोट माय चोक माय थ्रोट माय चोक अनेबल टू स्पीक अनेबल टू आस्क फॉर हेल्प नथिंग कैन बी डन एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम दैट वुड बी माय सिचुएशन व्हेन आई एम डाइंग बिकॉज़ आई एम गोइंग टू ओल्ड बी ओल्ड एट दैट टाइम आई विल बी नॉट एबल टू डू एनीथिंग सो एट दैट टाइम व्हेन आई एम नॉट able to do anything and i'm having all this problem smaranam kutaste smaranam kutaste means how can i even remember about you krishna that's his point how can i even remember you when i already have all this bodily discomforts and problem how can i remember you so krishna's response is what do you want me to do right now let my mind get entangled at your lotus feet i don't want to wait after some period of the time i don't want to wait when i have been called 911 has been called and i am at the dead bed where i have been taken to the hospital and all these things are on my nose my hands and all sort of things are plucked into my body and where am i going to think about god at that point of time it's not possible it's not possible it's it's you know one has to experience i can keep on telling this one but we all know this one it's going to be very uncomfortable situation at that time um so it's not possible at time of the death to remember krishna therefore kulashekara arvas says right now krishna padiya pada pankaja pancharantam your your lotus feet or the cages where let my mind right now not tomorrow because sunday tomorrow is sunday let me think about god tomorrow not like that right now oh maybe later in the evening today 
no, not later in the today, right now, at this very moment, let my mind be entangled or caged into your lotus feet. Let me not think, think anything else because I don't know when I'm going to die. I don't know when I'm going to die. I don't know when, how I'll be dying. I don't know even, even if I know when I'm going to die, uh, where I'm going to die, how I'm going to die, not necessary or no guarantee that I will remember you. I might be remembering about my, uh, my, my, I don't know, the 401k or maybe my stock market or maybe my dog, my children. It could be anything I'll be thinking about. So let me, now I'm stable. I'm able to function properly. Let me right now surrender at your lotus feet. Think about your lotus feet. So this is a beautiful prayer by Kulashya Karawa. And the message of Bhagavad Gita is completely dwells into this concept, the concept that we just saw. The entire Bhagavad Gita of 700 slokas that we saw, we've been, we've been um, uh, reading, is to come to the point that we can be successful in our life. Many people think the success of life is to accumulation of material things. That's not success of the life. Success of the life as per Kula Shekhar Arva, as per Krishna and Bhagavad Gita is that point where we are ready to depart from this body. Prana prayana samayi. Prayanam. Prayanam is journey. When I'm in this body, did I uh, uh, did I remember Krishna? Am I able to remember Krishna or not? If you if we remember Krishna, we are a successful man in this world. If we couldn't remember Krishna, doesn't matter. You have enough property or enough money, you know, savings for your children and whatever it is, doesn't matter. We are called a failure. Simply we call we are called a failure. So, but just imagine that one more point where Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that Antakale Chamam Eva Smaran Muktva Kalevaram. Krishna says in this in the Bhagavad Gita, Antakale Chamam Eva Smaran Muktva Kalevaram means Antakala. Antakala means at the time of death, at the time of that Smaran Muktva, one who remembers me, one who remembers Krishna, one who remembers, they will attain God. What about those who does not remember God? That's a question. What about those who remember, does not remember God? What will happen to them is yam yam vapi smavar smaran bhavam twajati ante kalayavaram. Yam yam vapi smaran bhavam twajati ante kalayavaram. Tam tam ivaiti kontaya sadhatat bhava bhavita. Bhavita. Sadhatat bhava bhavita. Where he says that whoever remembers at the time of death, whatever they remember, and that is what they will attain in the next life. If they remember me, they come to me. If they remember something else, they will attain that. Right? That does not mean that if I remember White House, then I will be a president next lifetime. That's not the message here. Right? We'll talk about this as we go. Or we can refer to Bhagavad Gita, the 8th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, where we covered in detail about this particular topic. But the point here is, the Bhagavad Gita, which is 700 slokas, where it starts with um, um, the very first sloka, Dharma Kshetre, Kuru Kshetre, Samaveda, Yuyut Savaha, Ma Makaha, Pandavas Chaiva, Kimakurvata Sanjaya. That's the very first sloka it starts. And the last sloka where it finishes, where it says, Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, Yatra Partha Dhanur Dharaha, Tatra Sir, Vidyor Budir, Bhutir, Dhruva Niti, Matir Mama. Matir Mama. So this is the last sloka, and that's the first sloka. Between these, 698 slokas, right? It's all about bringing one to a point to remember Krishna at the time of death. As simple as that. That's the only purpose of the entire Bhagavad Gita. At the time of the death, let us remember Krishna. That's the whole purpose of Bhagavad Gita. And the way that Krishna takes Bhagavad Gita is quite philosophical, very philosophical deep philosophy one sloka can be we can spend one sloka for hours together so much one can learn from each sloka but how much time do we have to have where we can spend so much time in the 700 slokas right it is not possible it's not possible uh, 
if, if it's possible, that means you have to do, you won't, you won't, be, you won't be able to do anything else other than only spending all of our time and reading Bhagavad Gita. So, um, for that reason, kind enough, the Lord, he himself appeared, personally he himself appeared into the form of literature and in the form of this wonderful book, wonderful sastra, wonderful grantha called Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavad Gita is what Krishna spoke. Bhagavatam is not, not Krishna himself. That's a big difference. That's a big difference, right? Okay. Then we should understand how great Bhagavatam must be. Words, the 700 words which he spoke from his lotus mouth, whereas here he himself appeared. That is Bhagavatam. Now, when he appeared, it's unlike how Bhagavad Gita is, which is loaded with heavy philosophy. People will get uh, sleepy. Bhagavad Gita, if you're not that much interested, and people might get bored, people might get, you know, lose interest. They might think that, you know, for example, if anyone joins Bhagavad Gita, that we are right now in our daily Bhagavad Gita, we are doing the um, fourth chapter in the 34th sloka. That's what we covered today. If anyone joins today and heard today's sloka, they will have no clue about what the connection is because Bhagavad Gita is a flow of connection from one sloka to another sloka to another sloka to another sloka. So it's beautifully connected like a, like a beads connected in a nice chain. So anyone who's joined in between, they, it, it, has to, it requires quite an effort on that person to understand what this message, what this sloka speaks about. Otherwise, one might wrongly interpret that particular sloka in Bhagavad Gita. But just imagine you are inviting anyone, someone to Bhagavatam. Now we are in the fifth canto of Bhagavatam. Anyone to join Bhagavatam today. Guess what? It's so very easy. Anyone at any point of time can jump straight into Bhagavatam because it's the same Bhagavad Gita now in a simple format, a story format. Same Bhagavad Gita, the story format. Therefore, Bhagavatam has its own uh, 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 speciality or uh, greatness where anyone doesn't require any prerequisite, doesn't require they have to start from day one doesn't really matter. They can just jump into Bhagavatam and start hearing. I'm talking about hearing. If one wants to really systematically study Bhagavad Bhagavatam, then yes, obviously they have to go from first canto to the end of the canto. That's a different thing. But anyone can hear Bhagavatam at any point of time. So the purpose of Bhagavatam is somehow or the other the same. I mean, it's the same message of what Bhagavad Gita teaches. That is Prana Prayana Samaye. Prana Prayana Samaye. That Samaya Smaranam to remember Krishna. Otherwise, at this point of time, Kutaste, it is not possible. We cannot remember Krishna. Therefore, to narrate this wonderful uh, I, uh, message that Krishna gave in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna himself appeared as Bhagavatam and now he is telling this message in a, in a story way, in a story format. And that is where, where we are seeing now the story of King Bharata. In the last session, what we saw is about King Bharata and his, uh, his, his, his uh, activities as a king, his families, his children, how he was doing his activities, and when he was, it was time for him and he realized that he wants to completely dedicate himself in cultivating bhakti towards Krishna, then he left, left everything, retired everything, and then went into uh, the forest in a place where he could completely dedicate himself now with no responsibilities and no need to worry about the family members and etc etc he just want to fully dedicate himself so he went to the forest when he went to the forest he was he was performing whatever he needs to perform very nicely things were going on as per the as per his plans krishna has his own plans obviously for everyone so his life was going on very nicely and days were catching up and he saw a, a deer, a doe, a deer was drinking water nearby, water nearby lake where he was sitting and watching and due to the fear of the sound, the roaring sound of a lion, the, the deer jumped off 
and then delivered a baby, a small beer. And King Bharatha, um, now he's a sage you now, he took the small deer and then start, you know, giving shelter to the deer and taking off care of the deer. And he became very dear to the deer and deer became very dear to him. And he can't do anything without the deer now. But one point of time on, on one particular day, um, he couldn't find the deer. So he was very, very disturbed. And then he was trying to look for this uh, a deer. And so in search of the deer, he was calling out for the deer's name and searching for the deer and then asking for the lake and asking the lake if he found the, uh, if, if the lake knows where the deer is, asking the tree, asking the moon and all sort of things. And he was comparing himself the beauty of moon with the beauty of the, of the face of the deer and he was praising the deer's footprints, all sort of things. He was, he was, become, he was literally a mad man, mad after the deer. That's how he was. Now he's fully in that consciousness while he was going out, he slipped and fell off a cliff. He fell off the cliff as he was falling off. He was still remembering the deer. And then while he fell off the ground, onto the ground, then he could see that he's going to die. Prana prayana samaye, prana prayana samaye, that time when the life is going to go. Now he opened his eyes and saw. He saw the deer, stand, deer standing right next to him. He's looking right into the eyes of the king and the king was looking at the eyes of the deer. And the deer was thinking, my master is dying. And the master who is uh, um, Bharata, he was thinking, I'm leaving this deer alone in this world, horrible world. How is the deer going to survive without me? Who's going to feed it? Who's going to take care of it? He doesn't know to bath, bath by himself. He doesn't know to eat by himself. How is he going to even survive without me? My dear dear. And he left his last breath. Left his last breath. And this is where we left also <laughs> last uh, Saturday. At the time of death, he was just simply remembering this dear. His mind was completely absorbed on the deer, nothing else, and he left the world. The Atma left the body. But anyone who lives, they have to take birth again. Anyone who takes birth, they have to leave the body again. So there's nothing, uh, there's no other choice here. There's one choice. That's why we are reading Bhagavatam. But for in de by default, everyone has to take birth. Everyone has to die. Anyone who dies has to take birth. So now, because he was dying, remembering the deer, as Krishna says in the 8th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Yam Yam Vapi Smaran Bhavam Tvajati Ante Kalevaram Tam Tam Ivaiti Kaunteya Tadadat Bhava Bhavitaha. Whoever, whatever you, in whatever consciousness you leave your body. And that's exactly what you will attain the next life. That's what you will attain the next life. Okay? So, um, obviously, he was remembering that deer and he got a deer body this time. But by the grace of the Lord, one beautiful thing was he was completely able to remember his past life. And that's not going to be the case for all of us. We don't remember our past life. And therefore, we should not say that, wish I remembered my past life. And that I would have been also like Bharat Maharaj. Now I'll be very serious. Well, Bharat Maharaj is such an elevated person. So we will see as the story goes, as the story goes here. But if it was us, rather than repenting for the mistake that we have done in the previous life, we will rather go back to the previous life members. We'll go, first thing we'll do is go to the bank and tell the bank people my account number is this one and pay my money back I want to take. That's what we will do if it was, if we remember our past life or if we remember past life, we'll go and first thing is we'll hit that enemy, slap that guy who really uh, you know, did something to us. So that's all our activities. Therefore, better we don't remember our previous life. We have enough of our previous lives and we'll be better off by not remembering the previously.
Now in the body of the deer, Bharat Maharaj, the Raja, the king, this is the second part that we are seeing in this whole episode. The first part was a king Bharata. Now we are in the second part where the king Bharata has taken a body, second is next birth, not second birth, his next birth as a deer. Now by the grace of God, he remembers the previous life, a previous life. And he was just thinking to himself, what a misfortunate person I am. I have fallen from the path of self-realization. I was going really nice. I was, I was almost there. I was right there. Oh, what is this? I gave up my son. I, I gave up my sons. I gave up my wife, my beautiful palace. And I gave up all those opulences just to get completely fixed in self-control in self-realization. I was constantly engaged in service of Krishna, hearing, thinking, chanting, worshipping, remembering Vasudeva. I was completely engaged. I was, I was a successful person. He was, the deer was thinking. I was a successful person. My mind was completely absorbed in this thing. However, due to my personal foolishness, this is what the deer thinks. Because this is where the absence, this is what the answer for that. Why this happened to uh, uh, King Bharata, right? I mean, we might ask this question, why it happened to him when he was such a great a devotee? Well, he, he himself uh, uh, says the answer. He says, due to my personal foolishness, my mind again become, became attached. This time, not to Urvasi, Ramba, Menaka, or back to my wife, my children, my kingdom, but just a deer, just a deer. Unbelievable, unbelievable. You know, people, I heard that someone in, uh, I don't know, someone was saying this, in London or somewhere, uh, uh, a old lady. So she had this, uh, her pet, a cat, a cat. So she's a wealthy lady. So when she was uh, dying, I mean, she had a will. The whole will was written for the cat. Can you imagine? The will was written for the cat. I don't know how far this is true or false. I'm, I'm just, but we get the message. There, there are uh, so many varieties of people. It's, it's quite possible people doing such things also. So it's not surprising to when we hear such news. So now the king was thinking that what a foolish person I am left everything, get completely detached, but finally got attached to this deer. Because of that, I have attained this deer body. I have completely fallen far away from all my practices. When he was just thinking like this, obviously deer will have deer, deer uh, satsang program is there, like how we have our satsang program. Deer, satsang, deer also have its own sangha. And not that all the deers have such sangha. There are dur, dur sangha also uh, among deers, uh, among animals, and all those things are also there in the, among their community also. So when the uh, deer remembered his previous life and he was repenting on this one, he did not go around and tell to everyone that, you know what? Do you know who I am? Not like, do you know who I am? I was a king last uh, birth. I was the uh, emperor. Uh, Bharata. I was like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. And now look at my situation, what I have done. I have fallen. He was not going and telling people, I mean, the day was not going and telling his sad story to anyone and everyone. He, you know, it, usually we do that one. You know, if we, if we had a life, a very great life. Okay. And for whatever the reason about our, because of our karma, whatever it is, we have uh, come down from that great life or what a, we are unable to do certain things, say for example. Now what happens, if you ask an aged person, you go and ask the aged person, and the aged person is going to tell what, you know what, when I was in my 20s, I used to lift 100 pounds. Okay? And you'll tell, I can do anything and everything. And if you speak to the aged people, they will speak always about their previous life when they were young, when they were able to do things and how they were successful, how they could do, achieve so many things. They always think about the, the, the earlier stages of their life. The question is, stop thinking about earliest, your, your previous stage of your life. Think about now, what can you do? 
what can you do is what the question stands out. Like it's a story of Rama in the Ramayana, a beautiful uh, place where, uh, um, where everyone after uh, hearing the, uh, where Mother Sita was, Mother Sita was Sampati, Sampati uh, was brother of uh, Chatayu. He, Sampati told that I could see Sita is right there. She's there in Asokavan, um, uh, right there. And then they all decided, okay, let's jump, let's go to Lanka and uh, uh, see Mother Sita. And every single monkeys over there, they were all saying that, you know, one person was telling, I can yojanas, you know, I can, I can jump 10 yojana. That's all. Another one is telling, I can jump 20 yojanas. Another one is telling, I can jump 50 yojanas. Angad was saying, I can, I can cross over this 100 yojanas. But then coming back is a problem for me. Like that, everyone was telling something or the other. Jambawan is a is a senior, super senior, among all these uh, 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 monkeys. Uh, he's not monkey; it's bear. So anyway, he was the super senior, highly respected because of his age and his knowledge and everything. He started speaking. You know what? When I was young, I used to rotate round, circumnavigate the, the the entire planet so many times. The question every monkey was asking, can you do it now? <laughs> if you cannot know, why are you speaking about what you did when you were in 20s and 30s? That's not the question here. So like that, now it was uh, many people, many, many times we came and we are like that. We start speaking about, I was like that, I was like this, and look at me now. It's just a waste of time speaking about how we were before. Rather, we have to see how we are going to be going forward. How we are right now. Can we change our behavior? Can we change our, our thought process towards God? That's what we need to think about. Many times people get into a, a, a chair, the, uh, what is called the, rock, uh, the rocker, the rocker, rocker chair, right? The rocker is like this, like this, like this, like this. You sit and people keep rocking, right? And then it doesn't take you anywhere. It doesn't take you anywhere. Likewise, the worries in our mind, the problems that we have, if you keep on, uh, if, thinking about it it's like a rocking chair it just rocks rocks and rocks it doesn't take us anywhere rather get off the rocking chair rock, get off the rocking chair keep moving what am i going to do for the rest of my life it doesn't matter whether now you're in 70s or now you're in the 80s or 90s every single moment is an opportunity for us to get close to the close to god so to, to should not, one should not repent now thinking, oh my God, I wish I know all this Bhagavatam when I was in my 30s. My father did not teach me. And no one was there when I came to St. Louis at that point of time to tell all these things. Do not worry about whether you, that time whether you had an opportunity or you ignored the opportunity or you did not look for the opportunity. It doesn't really matter. Now we all got this opportunity. Right now we got this opportunity to hear. So what Krishna sees is not how you were before. The big difference between us and God is we always dwell about what has happened before. And we always dwell about what people have done for us in past. We always think about how we would have been better if I have done this one in past. We always think about the past, 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 and past, and past, and past. We always live in past. But Krishna never thinks about the past. He thinks... At this point, are you now ready to take up bhakti? Are you ready to surrender to me? If you are ready to surrender at this point, I do not care how you were before. I do not care how you were before. I'll forgive you, however you were, I'll forgive you. I'll forget, not only forgive, I'll, for, I'll erase. You know, you, the hard disk is completely wiped off. You can't retrieve any data. It's like that. It's a brand, when you wipe the hard disk of your computer, it's it's, it's fresh to be installed like that, right? Install any operating system or software, whatever. It's fresh. Like that, I will remove everything about all the sins, all the mis things that you did, whatever nasty things you have done. I'll forgive and forget everything. But going forward, don't do that mistake again. Going forward, from this point onwards, think about me. See what you can do for me. How you can send it to me. How can you spend more time in remembering me? So that's what we need to do. It's a, that's why we need all the sadhu sangha. Such sangha is exactly why we need. So Bhagavatam gives us an opportunity like this to remember God. 
So the point here is age doesn't matter. Age does not matter. We, as soon as we think, my God, I wish I lost my opportunity in my life. I wish I heard this thing before. And that's a turning point in people's life. That, that the thought that we have at that very moment, a repenting, repentance, that one thought is sufficient enough to capture the heart of Krishna. It's very simple. It's very simple to please Krishna. All he is looking for is change of heart. That's all. Are we ready to change? If you're ready to change, he will give all opportunities. He will help us by all means to come closer to him. So the deer was coming back. The deer was thinking, what a misfortunate person I am. Now, after thinking so, then he went back to the same place, Salagrama, the place where he was before, um, where King Bharata was there. He went back there. Now you must be thinking, or some of you must be thinking, oh, look at him. Now he's going back again, looking for the deer, maybe. <laughs> but that's not the case why he want to go back. He want to go back to continue what he left uh, because of the place, the power of the place. So he went back there. He knows that Rishis and Munis are all there. So therefore he went there. He did not certainly went back to look for those, uh, those deer. But then he was very careful this time, very, very careful this time, not to get into any bad association. He was only with those Rishis, who are Rishis and the sages were there. He was only around them. He was not leaving them at all. He was just behind them. Whatever uh, they eat and throw things, he eats, he eats those uh, left out food. Whatever they chant mantras, he just stands there and listen to those mantras. Whatever they do, he was just completely in the association of the sages. And this deer was not going to another deer for any friendship. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't move forward at all. He didn't go anywhere else. And he didn't even go and tell anyone his past stories and start crying about it. Only one thing he was waiting for. Only one thing he was waiting for. To leave the body. Prana prayana samaya. That samaya, that time is what he was waiting for to leave this body, horrible body, right? We might be thinking that this body, deer's body, people like deer, right? Because it's so charming. It's just, the, its activities are so nice. It just looks here and there like this and jumps and runs. Therefore, we like deer. But this particular deer is very special deer. So he did not like his body. But he accepted the body because there's no other choice. Because of his mistake, he remembered the body. He remembered the deer. He got the deer body. Therefore, he was simply waiting for the time to come to leave the body. That's all he was doing. And one day he was just bathing in the holy waters. At the point of time, at the, right, the time came where he left his body. The deer left the body, died. He died. Now, at this point of time, the deer was completely in the association of the saintly people and always, always hearing the messages of Krishna and it was repenting about his previous mistakes. Therefore, at this point of time, he has been now rewarded to be born as a human, as a human. When he was born, he was born as a human, as a, as a Brahmana boy into a, a family, a dynasty of Angira, in Angira, Gotra. He was born in the, in the Gotra of Angira, in a Brahmin family. And his father was a very qualified Brahmana, a priest, very qualified, complete control of his senses, mind. He has studied all the Vedas. He gives a lot of charity very nice person, tolerant, gentle, learned, non-envious. So he had uh, uh, nine children from his first wife, this Brahmana. He had a second wife and he had a twins to his second wife. Now we have entered into this third part of Bharat Maharaj. We finished the first part where King Bharata and he left the body thinking of the deer 
And second part, was he born as a deer? And of those, uh, when the deer left his body, now he takes another, he, he's been rewarded and gave, gave, got another body, which is a third part. Now he's been born as a Brahmana boy. In a, 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 and then let's see what's going to happen at this point. Now the Brahmana, the father had a second wife. And they, the, the wife had a twin, a brother, a boy and a girl. That boy is Bharat Maharaj. The boy is the Bharat Maharaj, who was dear before. Now he was Bharat Maharaj. Now, again, because of God's grace, now he remembered his previous life also. Bharat, Bharat, Bharat Maharaj, now in the third, this life, not third life, in this life, because we don't know how many lives he went through, in this life, he remembered his previous life and life before that. He was a deer before, before that he was, he was a king, great king. So he remembered these things very well. Again, he only remembered because uh, of the God's mercy. Therefore, he was very, 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 very fearful this time. He was very fearful and very careful this time. He doesn't want to make any, many mistake, even a little bit of unknown mistake. So it's very, he doesn't want to fall down again by the same mistake. So he was not spending time like how other children will do. Now, do we have children here in this call? Any children? Hello? Hello? That is Rukmini. And then any, anyone else? Opal is here? Is she here? Is Balda Prabhu here? Not this time, Prabhu. Any other children here? Okay, all big children are here. Okay, well, so many you spoke. You want to say just yeah, once upon a time, children. <laughs> once upon a time, children. Thanks, Yomsi. <laughs> so, uh, you you want to say how you spend your time every day, uh, playing games and whatever it is. Very short. I I I do my work. And I do my all of my works, and I um, then I play. All right, very good. Thank you. Now this boy who was Brahmana boy. Now he since he remembered his previous lives. Now he want to be very careful, and therefore he did not behave the way that not usually the children will behave. Children like to go out, children like to play, and children like toys, and they do not stick on with one toy. You buy and give them one toy, if they play for uh, one day or two hours, and they look for another toy, and they watch TV, and uh, play cell phones, messaging, video games, you can just name it. This is how children spend time. Not, when Jadam, not during the um, Bharat Maharaj time, now I'm talking. That time it was much more uh, effective uh, way of bringing up children. Now, there are so many distractions are there, unfortunately. Um, now, therefore, Bharat Maharaj was avoiding any association with anyone. He was not going to play with children. children. Children will come and ask him, you come on, let's play Bharat. And his name was Jada Bharat this time. And uh, we'll see what the meaning of that very soon. Here. Now, Bharat was not at all playing, not at all showing any interest. He's, he's just, he was pretty much to himself. And he was quite dull and he behaved like as if he was not hearing when people are calling him. He was, you know, we also do, people usually do that, right? You call someone, they behave as if they didn't hear and they keep on walking. <laughs> that, that's because they don't want to take up any responsibility. They don't want to take up any services. Oh, did you call me? I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, Prabhu. I didn't hear you saying this one. By the time when that person come and says, sorry, Prabhu, the service would have been done already. So they also know when to come and ask sorry. So like that, Bharat Maharaj was also here. He was just behaving as if he didn't hear anything, as if he was not seeing anything. Even though he had good eyes, good ears, he was quite uh, uh, quite strong personality. Uh, uh, but then he was just behaving totally a different person externally. But internally, he was constantly thinking. He was constantly thinking about Krishna's lotus feet. 
constantly thinking about Krishna's lotus feet, always internally chanting the name of Krishna. Always. That's what he was thinking. His eyes were open. He was, he, wa he was walking. He was doing sort of normal people, a being, but then internally, even though his eyes was open, he was thinking about only, he could only see Krishna's lotus feet. Even though he was able to speak, but he was speaking to himself, internally chanting the name of Krishna. Even though he can hear others speaking, but he was only hearing the name of chanting that he was just doing. And he remembering whatever he heard before. So all his senses were fully engaged, completely engaged in Krishna consciousness. Completely in Krishna consciousness. But his father was a very nice person. He had a special affection to this child. Especially, you know, you have uh, many children. And then if one child is physically not, uh, you know, fit, having some problem, naturally the parents will spend more time with this child. It's natural. The other child will survive by itself somehow or the other. They know that. Now that they don't like the other child. But more time and energy is needed to be spent with this child who's requiring some attention, special children. Right? So likewise, his father was also having a special affection towards Jada Bharat. Jada, his name is Jada because he was, he was, everyone thought he was dull. Jada means dull. Matter is called Jada. You know, uh, say this, uh, or this, 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 this phone. The phone I have is Jada. Jada means just matter. It doesn't have any intelligence. But if I go and tell to people, they will think, what are you talking about? It's much more intelligent than you because it has, can do wonderful things, right? That's not what it means. It's just programmed to do certain things. It doesn't have sense at all. And the phone doesn't have a sense. We all know that one. Therefore, he was acting as if like a matter, dull matter. Therefore, he, everyone called him as Jada Bharata. Jada Bharata. Right? Now, um, his father was so uh, uh, attached to the son, he tried, he understood that this boy is not going to be fit for getting into a family like Grahastha. Grahastha like. So he was trying to teach him whatever he could, at least to be a Brahmachari. Brahmachari. So he was trying to give all sort of instruction, how to, how to do certain things. And whatever the father was keep on saying the instruction, Bharata behaved as if the father is talking to someone else. Right? As if the father is talking to someone to someone else, not to him. The father did not lose hope. He, he was just trying to teach him, you know, Bharata, you need to wash your hand before eating. And you need to wash your hand after eating. But he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He put his hand on the ground and then start eating. And after eating, he puts the ground, uh, hand on the ground and again take and put and eat. So, you know, they, he will tell, father will tell Bharata, you need to lie down and pull the, uh, you know, comforter on you. But he will pull the comforter and lie down on top of the comforter. So many, many, whatever the instruction has been given to the, uh, given by the father, he will, he will do exactly the opposite of what the instruction is being given. That's how he will be behaving. Behaving. Purposefully, not that he was doing uh, in, intentionally. He was intentionally behaving in this way so that no one bothers him, right? No one bothers him. He just, I, I mean, just leaves this person. That's how this person. Sometimes we get into that stage also. So when we are dealing with someone, how much ever we try to correct that person, how much ever you try to do something, that person never changes. And what happens? We change finally. <laughs> We change accepting that person. That's how this person is, right? So now his father was being a father. He could not give up his attempt to teach his children. He was very much worried. Teach his son. He was very much worried. Very much worried. What is it, what is going to happen to my son in this way? Who is going to take care of him? He tried to teach him how to do sandhya vandana, gayatri mantra, omkara, many things. Nothing. He was nothing going. Even all these are spiritual activities, for that matter. He was not telling, trying to tell, my dear son, um, you know, you know what? Get ready. You have to write uh, GRE, TOEFL, and go to America. Uh, that's where you need to go, settle down, and do whatever you need to do. So study well, and for that you have to prepare. You know, uh, this exam, that exam. None of this material things he was talking about. He was just talking everything to do with spirituality. His father was taking everything about spirituality. Interesting, right? 
But then Bharata did not follow any of those things because he knows if he starts speaking, he will start doing something, then that might, that might again get into the problem like how he went through in the last life. So this time he behaved exactly the opposite. So people does not trouble him, trouble him. Just, just leave him, leave him. So again, as parents, we are all parents. We should not thinking if when our children are not listening to, listening to us, our instruction, we should not think, oh, my son was, my daughter was in previous life, great sage. <laughs> that is why she or he is not listening this life. Very good. I'm so fortunate. What a fortunate soul I've got who doesn't listen to my instruction because of the previous life. That's not the case. We all know that. Um, you know, not so fortunate, many of us. Uh, so we have to continue instructing our children. That's a, that's a, you know, I just remember also when, um, when Krishna was stealing butter, Krishna was doing all sort of naughty things. And the parents will come and, and, and the, the, the village people will come and complain to Yashoda, will complain to Nanda Maharaj. And uh, when Yashoda heard continuously every single day, she will get so many complaints about Krishna. And she couldn't handle any further. So she went to Nanda Maharaj and told to Nanda Maharaj, Nanda Baba, Nanda Maharaj, our son is behaving like this. I don't know what to do. And Nanda really got into uh, Krishna's case. He called for Krishna. He was just chastising Krishna. He was trying to correct Krishna. And he was trying to give good instructions to Krishna. And the people around, some people were seeing this and said, spoke to Nanda Maharaj, said, that, am I speaking too fast? Is it? Are you all able to, I know, is it too, should I slow down? I'm no, sorry. Probably, I'm probably. Just, just good. Right. Okay, sorry, I mean, please stop me if I'm, you know, somehow, message is not clear, I'm speaking too fast. I'll try to. Now, the, the people, those people came and said, what are you doing, Nanda? What are you doing? You're, you're giving instruction and Correcting Krishna, Krishna is supreme God. You are correcting Krishna, and Nanda Maharaj responded back to those people saying, "He might be supreme God, doesn't matter for me. Now he is my son, therefore I have to correct him. It doesn't matter." So we have to be in that mood. Right? Our children may be uh, great sages or saint if they were. We never know, but still, if they make mistake, if still they are doing something wrong. We have to help them. We have to bring them into the right space. And that is why we've taken the role as a parent. We have to do this one. Not that someone else will take care and this karma is because of the karma the child has to go. No. I have a responsibility. Then we have to correct the children in whatever way we could. As long as we, they are in a position and they are in the right age to hear, we have all the freedom to correct them. Once they are out to a certain age, and they will correct us. We all know that one. Uh, so well, let's take an opportunity to do as much as we could to teach and not to think that, you know, if I do too much, then, you know, the children will uh, a ripple, I mean, it will have a ripple effect or it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. When we do the right thing to our children and we'll get the right result. If not now, it will come into effect at, at a point of time. So it's a parent's responsibility to make sure the children are given proper guidance in the path of spirituality. Now, the father of Jada Bharata was thinking the same way. And he was, he, was, he was trying to teach him, educate him, but failed, continuously unsuccess. Whatever he was trying to do, he was not able to do anything. He was trying to teach him the fire sacrifice. This, my dear son, come sit here. We have to put, pour the ghee into the, the fire like this. And Bharata will take the ghee and pour it into his mouth. You know, he'll give some grains to drop it into this one. Take the grain and throw it to the birds outside. Right? So all sort of unbelievable, in, 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 in people who think he's mad. Obviously, one, anyone who does like this, they will think he's mad, gone mad. Therefore, the father, completely in the, in, in, much worried, but unfortunately was not able to successfully do anything for his son. But he died. The father died. The father died, leaving his wife and the second, the twin, under the custody, under the care of his first wife and other children. 
Now, the other wife, other mothers that, that had uh, nine children, and the nine children of uh, that Brahmana, now they, we know how things go between brothers. Now, especially even in this case, brothers are not of same mother. Therefore, obviously, these nine children started mistreating Jada Bharata. They, they, they treated him as if like a servant. But Jada Bharata didn't even care about it. He did not change. If one, one, one brother is going to do something to another brother, right? Is another, immediately what happens if you have two sons at home, right? The, the, the younger one or the older one does something to the other, other brother. Obviously, the other one who has been affected goes to the mother and father and says, you, you see this one, my, my brother, my bhaiya, my anna, whatever you call it. You know, if they call bhaiya and anna, that's well and good. I think those things are no more in practice nowadays. Everything is by name now. That's okay. Now, it's not okay, but it's whatever, whatever we can change things, right? So we have to go with the flow, unfortunately. Kali Yuga. Now, 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 he goes and complains about his brother to his parents. Likewise, the nine sons of uh, the, the first wife were really mistreating Jada Bharata. Really mistreating Jada Bharata. He was just uh, treating him like a slave. Pretty much like a slave. And, uh, but Jada Bharata did not go and complain to his mother. Interestingly, did not come. You know, you can relate the correlate the situation, incident of what we saw previously in the fourth canto. Does anyone remember? Jada Bharata did not go and complain to his mother because of his mistreatment of his other mother and other brothers. Can someone rem relate this incident in canto four? We saw another story. No one remembers? I'm audible. Hare Krishna. Can you all hear me? Okay, thank you. Now, in the, in the, the fourth canto of Bhagavatam, Dhruva Maharaj, right? Dhruva Maharaj went through the insult. Similar thing. His father, his, 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 his another mother, they all mistreated him. What did he do? He ran to his mother. He ran to his mother complaining what had happened. That's just correlation. Whenever we read, whenever we read Bhagavad Gita or whenever we read Bhagavad we have to try to relate things of what we heard before. And that's how the capacity, our memory, capacity will increase it's a practice it just increases how to increase the capacity of memory just we have to always remember these things not the other thing what we spoke in the starting of this uh, uh, in the session not the bad things about all these good things so let coming back to the story here now Jarabharata, though he was treated like this he did not even think about what they he didn't care about it but he was just doing whatever they asked him to do he didn't feel that he's been mistreated in first place. He didn't feel that he was being mis mistreated. But he was behaving as a deaf person, as a blind, as a dull person. And therefore, because he's like that, everyone took uh, advantage of him. And then they gave him whatever is left out. They don't they did not give him any nice food to eat. They would only give little food. And whatever the little that they gave will not be palatable. It's a stale one, left out food, tasteless, spoiled eaten by worms, right? No one wants to touch that food. That is what they will give to a Jada Bharata to eat. Just think about ourselves. If we have been given any of, uh, we have to go through any of these things. How? Even when we have been given nice food, we already complain we have not been given. That person got the extra gulab jamun and there's only one gulab, not extra gulab jamun. Look at his gulab jamun. It is one inch, one millimeter bigger than my jamu. That's how we start comparing even the sizes of jamu. That's how we are people. Whereas Jada Bharata is completely thinking whatever you give, I will eat. Whether you give, whether you don't give, it doesn't really matter for me. So he was just not showing off the sankar. 
uh, hanger. Please remember, he is completely aware of what's going on. He's not that a real mad person. He knows everything, but he doesn't want to come out. He doesn't want to say a word, anything, that you are wrong and you are correct. I am right, you are wrong. What you're doing is injustice to me. None of those things. He didn't open up anything. He was just going on the way that, let's, let me finish this life and get rid of this body. Because I made a big blunder in my previous lives. I don't want to get af affected by this happenings of the thing around me. Many of the things happen because of the reacting, reactive situation in our life. When we start reacting to the situation, guess what? Immediately we get karma for it, right? Because when, when we react to the situation, our thought process is not stable. Whatever we decide is not going to be the right thing to be done. Therefore, what happens is the action that we are going to do for as a reactive action is going to be wrong anyway. When you do wrong things, you get wrong karma. That is bad karma, right? Therefore, Jada Bharata was very careful. Let it let people treat however they want to do. Let me finish all my karma this lifetime. I don't want to create any new karma by reacting to the situation. It's a very important message from this story. We don't want to create any new karma because we have enough of karma already to drain. Why we want to react to the situation? and collect more karma, we should not be doing. So he was exactly fully aware of the situation. Therefore, he was not at all doing any of these things. But his body was so strong like a bull. He had strong mus muscles. He didn't go to the gym to build his biceps or in a broader shoulder, but he was like a really like a Hercules person. Right? He, was, he was quite strong personality. He was eating stale food. He was not going and doing any sort of things, but he was quite strong person. He used to roll on the ground. He doesn't take bath properly. He doesn't apply soap on his body. Uh, none of those things. But he was completely effulgent. He was completely effulgent. He was so, so effulgent without even taking proper shower. So that's not to say that, Vic, I also don't take shower because I am Jada Bharata. No, we are not Jada Bharata. We have to take shower and we have to keep our steam. Not to take messages like this, like you know how we saw in the lifetime of Rishabhadeva. They were they were religion formed because of wrongly understanding the message of Rishabhadeva. That's how our religion of Jainism uh, started. So anyway, we have to be careful and we follow and what we understand. That's why we need to have guru in our life who could teach us. You know, this is not the way to understand the message of Bhagavad Gita. This is what the message of Bhagavatam, this is how you need to do. So Bharata, Bharata, Jada Bharata was just leading his life for the sake of survival. Just for the sake of living, he was living, not doing anything at all and eating whatever was being given. And he never had any grudge against any of these people. That's the important point. He never had any grudge about any of these people. He was not thinking, look, you guys are doing me right. I, God is watching you. That's how we think internally. Right? What we think? If anyone does something to us and we are not able to take revenge of that person, what we think? God is watching, my friend. Buddy, God is watching. He will pay you. Come on. Bharata was not even thinking like that. He was not even thinking about having any, he was not having grudge about any of these people at all. He was just move completely in Krishna consciousness, complete Krishna consciousness. So we have to learn a lot of nice things from these stories that how if someone does something to us, then we should not develop a grudge against them. Just leave it and just go on with our life, understanding that this person is just an instrument to drain my karma in my life. That's all it is. So while Bharat Maharaj was going on the life was going on like this now he was being placed in in a, in a, in a field because the, the the sons of the brahmana they put him into the field to take care of the the, the field so that the, the the birds the crows doesn't come and take the grains 
uh, the animal does not spoil the, uh, the the field. Therefore, they put Jada Bharata over there like a god to take care of the, uh, the this land, the the field, agricultural field. Now, while he was there, what happened is that there were these decoys. Decoys. There were the leader of the decoy was aspiring, wanting to have a son. He wanted to have a son. So he was praying to Kali, Kali Mata, Badra Kali, Kali Mata. So he wanted to offer someone, uh, sacrifice an animal. So he told his people to go look for some animal so that they can do a bali. Bali means to offer a living entity who's alive, cut the uh, animal uh, in a cut off, and then made that make that as an offering to Mother Kali. So these people were looking for an animal, and they couldn't find any animal, and they came across this agricultural field, and they saw Bharata, Jada Bharata, was a human, but his behaviors and the way he was, he was like almost like an animal. Therefore, they pulled him and took him to the leader of the decoids. So that Bali, now the Jada Bharata can be given as a Bali. Bali means as an offering to Mother Kali. He was pulled to that place. When he was pulled, dragged and taken to the place, Bharata was again, Jada Bharata was again, not screaming out, not pulling out his phone and calling out 911. He was not telling people, please save me, save me. None of those things, nothing. Interestingly, nothing. He didn't even call out name of Krishna. Krishna, save me. I like how Draupadi cried out. He didn't even call out. Of course, he was chanting inside, but he was chanting inside, not that, my dear God, please, these guys are pulling me now. Please save me, my God, please save me. No, nothing. He was just chanting for the sake of chanting and left the rest to the destination. Whatever God wants to do, let him do. That's how he was. Now he's been dragged to the place where he's going to be given as an offering to Bhadrakali. I would like to stop at this point and open up for any discussions or questions and we will see what's going to happen to Bharata. Is Bharata going to be chopped by the decoids and what will he remember at the time? Is he going to be born as a decoid in the next life or what's going to happen? Those are all some attractions coming up for next session. Please do join. This program has been sponsored by Ashok Kumar. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. <clears throat> Any questions, questions? Nice cliffhanger, Prabhu. <laughs> Sorry? I said, nice cliffhanger. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> now, someone has, someone has posted a question. Uh, is Badrakali is Kali? Yes. yes. It's the same. Kali. Badrakali. Has any other question has been posted? I'm not... I'm on read. Uh, there is any... Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I have a question. Yes, Shivangi Mataji. Uh, Prabhuji, if we have, um, if somebody does something and we feel hurt about that, uh, but in our mind we don't, um, we don't say that okay, God will take care of your deeds or some bad things in our mind. We don't think about that, but still we are hurt. So that that also going to create some karma for our next life or the same life. No, it will not. The only reason that uh, you are feeling hurt is because at that particular point, that is how that particular karma has been drained by feeling hurt. 
Now, for example, uh, I might be I might be suffering with some pain, but my mother might be thinking about me and suffering that my son is in America. He is in this coronavirus situation where things are getting bad, and I don't know what's going to happen to my son. You know, his only son. If she's going through those things, she's not affected, but she is being hurt of the situation that's happening here is simply because she is mentally draining her karma by thinking about her son. Likewise, when you're hurt, it's not creating new karma, your karma is getting drained. And that's one of the ways that karma drains. Mm -hmm. That answers your question? Yes, Prabhuji, thank you. Any other questions? There's a question from Greg. But, but, but just, sorry, but just I want to add one more point. But as a, as a practicing devotees, we should also understand when we are hurt by certain things, then we immediately respond or change our, uh, our thought towards Krishna and accept that the hurt but then not to be dwelling into that hurt situation. Accept it for whatever the reason that I've been hurt, but that should not stop us in any way in what we have to do in our life. And that should not, as you said nicely, that should not create a further grudge or uh, some sort of hatred toward the other person. Those things, the practice that one, we have to be carefully doing. Okay, someone else had another point to add or questions? Yeah, Greg has put, posted a question. How could the Dequites not know that Jad Bharat was Ramana child? Sorry, what? How? Let me see if I can find the. Yeah. How would the Dequites not know that Jad Bharat was a Brahmana child? Well, they were just. It doesn't. They were just looking for someone to be offered to Kali. They did not, it doesn't really matter for them whether it's a Brahmana or whether it's a Kshatriya, whether it's a, it's a, it's a goat or whether it's a whatever it is. They were just looking for a living entity that can be offered to Mother Kali. That's all they were looking for. So they don't care about who the person was. They just pulled this person, dragged him. That helps? Correct? That, does it help? Okay. Do you, do you want to say, Prabhu, that they really fed him very well? They gave him nice prasadam. They cleaned him up. They actually. Well, you're well, you selling all the suspenses now. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> That's all coming up attraction, right? So we have to hold the thing until for next Saturday. Right. Okay, luckily, it's Krishna's blessings and mercy upon us that uh, the Zoom did not get disconnected as we were quite concerned about it. Luckily, it worked. So hopefully, it will work also going forward. So if there is no other, anyone wants to reflect on what we have covered so far in today's session, any learning things or whatever it is, you want to share something? Not necessarily you all have to ask questions all the time. It could be anything that you can speak related to this topic, not anything about COVID-19 and things like that. I'm just, um, Prabhu, uh, reflecting that uh, when Bharat Maharaj, uh, I mean, in that situation, at his position, when he knew so much, he left uh, uh, the whole family, the whole uh, nice things he had, and and how he could get attached to um, to a deer and willfully neglect his duties where we where we really stand. You know, we. 
we have not given up anything yet and uh, and then you know it's just it just looks so difficult that's the uh, uh, just just a reflection that's exactly in my mind too rashad prabhu yeah it's very difficult for me okay is any anyone else feel the same or rest of them feeling well oh, this is nothing we can do it it is certainly difficult which even for me okay so can i uh, can i just make an assumption that majority of them in this call feel the same that it seemed to be very difficult hearing the story i guess not hearing what is it mata ji oh, no i was saying not hearing the story but applying into our practical life like it was not, it is applying not difficult to yeah it it's not difficult to hear the story uh, it's encouraging it's enlightening but it's difficult for me to apply it completely uh, into my life hmm. now just i don't want to leave this session today by making you all feel hopeless for until we meet next week so i'll just say one thing there is completely i mean there's a lot of hope for all of us and we can certainly get we can certainly pass this exam that we are going through in this very life and i'm not just saying for the sake of saying we can have complete faith and krishna that krishna is the only savior and he will not leave me to suffer in this world he will not leave me let me alone being my parent my father how can he is going to leave me suffer like this so therefore we should have that faith yes we hear all these different different things how difficult it is but eventually we know god is always there krishna is always there helping and monitoring closely our activities and he gives all possible ways for us to get close to him and that's that that's the fact that's really a fact even if we try not to do he's not going to let us go he will somehow the other come back and back and back again in other words god is shameless i'm sorry to say this but god is shameless person because just imagine if you mataji i'm just speaking on you priya mataji i hope you don't mind if you have a relative right do you have a brother sister mataji yes prabhu ji i have a younger brother okay just for the understanding purpose i know it nothing will happen like this should not happen my prayers but just imagine that you go to your brother you your brother comes to you let's change this way so you to feel not offended your brother comes to you and then you just does not treat your brother well do you think your brother is going to come back to you again next year maybe no maybe no you keep on repeating the same thing what about then how is the answer going to be no no that's the truth answer one time maybe is very very nice person he forgive you he, you know he just accepted the situation but you keep on treating the same way to your brother obviously he is going to stop coming to you right but because why he is a sensible person he is sensitive to the situation what's happening but god is senseless <laughs> in one sense he is shameless because he coming to he is coming to us to help us and we keep on rejecting him keep on rejecting him not this lifetime every lifetime we keep on rejecting him but shameless god he comes to us and wanting to help us gives us his bhagavad gita gives us bhagavatam gives us devotees association gives us a temple gives us a good life gives us a good family gives us whatever we want 
but we keep on rejecting God. But he again comes to us. Just imagine how merciful God is. This is all nothing but mercy of God. He, is, he does not leave us. He doesn't leave us. He will take us back. He will help us. It, just a degree of faith that we have in Krishna, that much we can get things done faster. So it's from our side, we have to keep and put our complete faith with an acceptance that our, we are limited with what we can do. Acceptance that how much condition we are. Accepting the situation and try as much as possible from our side to push to the next level. Little bit, whatever we can, we have to push to the next level. Little bit. And that extending ourselves from our comfort zone is opening up the door to Krishna. If you are doing something today, let me do little, very little extra from tomorrow onwards. Very little. It could be whatever it may be, very little. Those are the things. It's slowly, 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 slowly the doors are opening for us and it becomes wide open for us. And, and we'll see more on this particular topic. What we have spoken now is just opening the door. If not this, this lifetime, it opens the door for future lifetime. But Krishna is always with us, helping us, watching us, monitoring us, guiding us in our life. But if, if we are like Kulashekara Arwar, who just was thinking about, I don't wait, want to wait for my next life. I want right away, this very life. That is also possible. That is also possible without have to go through all these big programs of detachment and you know uh, completely being isolated. I com I can continue being United States of America in St. Louis in whatever we are going to work, having the family, having the children, doing whatever we can, but still we can be successful in this very life. Is there a way? Yes, that's possible too. But we have to stay tuned to understand those things. Hope Thank that you. helps little bit to Ashok Prabhu, Gopal Prabhu, and Priya Mataji and the rest of them who feel the same. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhuji. Yes. Okay. If there is nothing else to discuss, we can... Oh, there are some Ashok. questions from Vikram. Oh, there's a question? Okay, please, let's see the question. Hello, Prabhuji. I have a question. What if at the moment, what if at the moment before death, we think about an emotion such as fear or pain instead of an object? what will we attain? Please understand, when we say that yam yam vapi smaran bhavam tvajatyante kalaivaram, what it means, what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita is not that always that you think about a dog, you being born of a dog. Not because you are thinking about a woman, you will become born as a woman. It's not like that. The stories are, we've seen this so far, the direct examples like that, Puranjana stories, Today we saw, we've been seeing about the deer story. That is, that is obviously one way where one can be born directly, take that particular body. But also understand that it could also be, one can be born as a human, but have a dog's quality, barking all the time. Right? That's also possible. So the emotion, emotion that we carry in our previous life could be, the, 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 the predominating consciousness or the behavior that we might get in our next life, whatever the body that we get, it could be a, a dear body, which is always fearful, or it could be a body of a human, but always fearful of anything and everything. So it's not necessarily that the body that we will get, it is also that one might have the vasanas, that emotion carried into any body that we get in the next lifetime. Does it help? Okay. 
who, who, I don't know who asked this question. Vikram. 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 Okay. Vikram, are you, does it make any yeah, it makes sense? sense, Prabhu, thank you. Thank you, Vikram. Because we see, right, some people are always barking, always they are on the peak of voice, shouting, screaming, they cannot talk softly, nicely, or in a, in a normal way, you know, maybe that's what they were in the previous life and uh, somehow they got the human body but still carrying the previous life's behaviors. I'm not saying here to start seeing people as dogs and donkeys and bulls and lions, that's not the message here, but just answering the question because we should not be doing that mistake while we're dealing with people, that's not good either. With that said, thank you all very much and um, let's stay and meditate on Bharat Maharaj's behavior, wonderful characters, and there's a lot more to learn from him. It's coming up and we'll see what's going to happen in the place of sacrifice at the temple of Bhadra Kali. Kali. Thank you. Ashok Prabhu, back to you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for uh, attending the program. Uh, the attendance looks very good. Uh, I hope we are all learning something. I am definitely. Thank you very much.